isn't anything better than a trip getting ready nope. for a long journey where my podcast released a new epi searching for a fade fiend new fixation giving this a subscribe is the same sensation started with the day ones they gave us fuel to support the season could have been anywhere in the world but you're here for a reason notification bells have some friends all to let you know check your bluetooth connect talking with Denado. All right, welcome in episode 27. Man, we back at it, y'all. We got a lot to talk about. We got Tevin Mims. Tevin, we in the building. Late on a Saturday night. What hey, you sipping on, sipping ain't no, on? Ain't no telling what I might say on this <laughs> motherfucker right here, man. I'm just saying. I'm trying I'm trying to keep it professional, and, and let's just get it. <laughs> yeah, yo, we want the good stuff. So we're going to start off. Come yo, we're going to start off, man. Jimbo Fisher. Seventy-six point eight million dollars. Yeah, big time. They parted ways with him big time. in his seventy games, forty-five and twenty-five. Kevin Sumlin was forty-eight and twenty-two. And if you remember, Tevin, Kevin Sumlin didn't have a problem going down into Alabama and getting a win. He Not did at all. that. Not at all. But he also what had say a. You? He also had a, a Heisman Trophy winner to be able to go get that win. And, you know, different things like that. But uh, at the end of the day, man, you look at where Jimbo is going into shit. His, his now seems like his 100th hundred, hundredth year at Texas A&M. He got to be able to get it done or get up out of there. It's about time, man. So you almost have to ask yourself, why did we run Kevin Sumlin out? Yeah. I, I don't want to talk conspiracy theory, but what were your expectations with bringing in Jimbo Fist? Fisher, did did someone outside of Texas A&M think they were winning a national championship with him just because he won one at Florida State? Well, I mean, if you look at Jimbo's kind of his track record, I mean, he's an SEC guy. He's a Nick Saban guy. He was fresh off a of, uh, championship and a Heisman, <laughs> by the way. Yes. At Florida State being able to come in, man. So he had high expectations, high hopes. But somehow, some way, he just wasn't able to get it done. I don't know how, but – couldn't get it done. Hundred million dollars later. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What what what's your what's your interest level when it comes to boxing? Uh, I'm hit or miss. I ain't gonna lie. I'm hit or okay. miss. Okay. Now I got a stat for you, and not a lot of people know this. So don't feel bad if when I drop some stats on you, if yeah. you go one way, if you go the other way. I'm gonna ask you, would you rather have Muhammad Ali at 20? Three or Mike Tyson at twenty-two. I was just man. I was I was literally just thinking about something similar to this earlier today. I saw a picture of uh, when Holy, well, excuse me, when Muhammad Ali, the nineteen sixty-six fight. I saw like the the aerial shot of it. Yes, sir. I'm like man, for them to be able to still talk about Muhammad Ali almost a hundred years later, if you really put it in perspective, right? Nobody really saw him in his prime. Tyson is the the closest thing that we'll be able to see uh, to anything uh, in our generation. So I think everything got to be able to be compared back to Tyson at this point, you know? So uh, a young Muhammad Ali versus a young Tyson, I'm taking Tyson all day long, man. Come on now. Yeah, yeah. No Go complaints to Tyson. here. No complaints. I mean, Muhammad Ali, for his time and what he meant to the sport, for the culture, Yeah. that's He'll probably still keep to get to keep that goat status, but he ain't want that twenty-two year old Tyson. Though. Yeah, no question, no question. That body was gonna get rocked. What? You, you, what? Could, you could rope a dope, but you may not get up. Come on, man, go to Tyson. Yes. Come on, man. Okay, let's 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 talk a little basketball. We I want to keep everyone's interest in here, but we gonna go to college basketball. Does the name Seth Towns mean anything to you? Mm, familiar. I'm, I'm, I've been aloof. Okay. Seth Towns made his Howard University go Bisons. He, oh, he nice. made his Howard debut on Tuesday. This is his eighth season in college basketball, Tevin. No shit. <laughs> I, know. I know. So the transport, transfer portal for playing time. Let me tell you what happened. In 2016-17, he was at Harvard. 2017-18, mm -hmm. he's at Harvard. 2018-19, mm -hmm. he got injured. The next year, 2019-20, he got injured. Yeah. So now we're up to 2021. He's at Ohio State. He plays, so he's back healthy. 
mm-hmm. coming out of COVID. In 2021-22, he's at Ohio State. He gets injured. So he gets to come back in 22-23 at Ohio State. He didn't play DNP. And then I just told you Tuesday he's at Howard. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> Wait, yo, yo, this dude, this dude like 30. <laughs> I'm like, yo, he been he been playing shit for as long as I've been coaching. <laughs> yo. Hey, bro, this is my whole career for me not playing, leaving the NFL to be able to go into college ball. Like, ah, damn. Yo. So how old is this kid? 32? <laughs> just a, yo, just about. <laughs> yo, so I, do we? Do you have a problem with it? the transfer portal, the COVID year? The uh, honestly. Honestly, I don't, man, because, I mean, at, at that time in that COVID year, uh, they were just kind of making up rules that nobody was really even following suit for. You know what I mean? Like, kind of just, what's the what's the way I can put this? Uh, just trying to just patch over the problem. Yes, sir. Not necessarily kind of preparing for the future. You know what I mean? So even at the time where I, I, I well, from a college football standpoint, <laughs> I don't know what it is on basketball, but. From a college football standpoint, man, at the time where they were implementing all these rules with COVID and being able to get these guys extra years and being able to take away years and things like that, man, like nobody knew what the hell was going on. Nobody knew what the hell was going on at all. Yeah. So, so Tevin, uh, for those who don't know, could you could you tell them uh, where, where, where'd you play your college football at? So, man, I played at Texas. I played at Texas in my first two years. Uh, played at South Florida for two years as well. I was a JUCO kid in between that, man, so I know how that whole grind go. But uh, a lot of people say, man, you went from the penthouse to the outhouse, man. I already know how it go. But uh, played on the national championship caliber team, and I was also being able to – I was also able to play at a mid-major level team as well. So uh, coached at a mid-major, uh, coached at a, a, a P5 as well. Yeah. I know I'm all over the place, God damn it, it's nine – O'clock at night. <laughs> it's nine Yo. o'clock at night. Hey man, I didn't have a couple of these. <laughs> it all counts. So Let's when I ask you, what what would a tw- let's let's say this young man came out, so he's 17 getting to college. Let's say 17, 18 going to college. Eight years later, he's 25, 26. Yeah. What would a 25, 26 year old Tevin been like in his final year in college? What a 25, 20, that's eight years of watching a film. What what would you have done with that 25, 26 year old body? As far as being able to go to the next level? And what you what rabbit what havoc you might have reaped on I mean, yeah, you did, you done did all you could in eight years, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you done. Yeah. At that point, you done. What more can you do, bro? It's time to go, it's time to go get that money at the next level. You know what I mean? Uh, to me, there's no, there's no in between. You gotta go. Yeah, yeah. But yo, he's gonna do it. He's gonna do it one more time, man. He gonna, he gonna lace him up for his final year. This is his final year. And he's at Howard. He and he's at Howard University. Well, he's gonna have a hell of a time. Howard shout homecoming is legit. Shout out to Larry Scott, man. Shout out to Lindsey Lamar. Uh, I know I'm drunk on camera and stuff like this, guys. Hopefully, it doesn't get out too crazy. <laughs> But uh, man, shout out to them boys, man. They holding it down over there, Howard. Howard. Yo, we gonna go to the NFL. We are gonna swing it back around, but I want to give everybody yeah, a little on. taste at the beginning. Come on. The, the Commanders' quarterback Sam Howell is the yeah. only quarterback in NFL history with over twenty nine hundred passing yards, over two hundred rushing yards, and sixty five percent completion through a player's first eleven. Games, yeah, career games, yeah. Did, did that catch you by surprise? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I'm shocked, and the only reason I'm shocked is this is this is better than Kurt Warner numbers. That stat. Now, what I think the difference is, Kurt Warner might have been there for the passing yards and the percentage, but you know he won't a scrambler. Yeah, and yeah, this not at all. Been, Pocket pass. So he's been showing the wheels. Yeah. Do they have a franchise quarterback through 11 games? What, what are your thoughts? Man, I'm just going to say uh, a lot of this shit comes from the locker room. So every time I hear the commander speak, 
it's always the other players kind of hyping up the quarterback situation, right? So, yes. I mean, if they seeing that in the locker room, I mean, I could tell you, uh, Derek Johnson saw uh, Pat Mahomes when he was on quarter when he was on practice squad and he was doing all the little throws and shit like that. I was yeah, like, I told you he was gonna be good, but at the end of the day, if they seeing it from the locker room, if, if the players are seeing it, shit, it's only a matter of time before he gets paid in the world season. You know what okay. I mean? Okay. So help us out. I know you you spent some time out in West Texas coaching, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so help us with this. How does this dude play at Iowa State and then come here and, and, and wreck the league on stats like this? How does Patrick Mahomes be out there in Texas Tech and then he gets to the NFL and he may be the greatest of all time? How does that happen, Tevin, that you could be held down in college and then in the pros, you're all world. Hey man, I ain't gonna lie. I thought I thought Patrick was the truth in college. Like when I first got to Texas Tech in 2016, that was Patrick's junior year. He had the option to be able to stay a year and be able to come out or whatever. But uh when I first got to practice and I just saw how Pat was throwing the ball in practice and shit like that. And when you start comparing, I mean I'm fresh out of playing, so I'm comparing him to other NFL quarterbacks that I'm just get, getting done practicing against, you know what I mean? Comparing them to like Colt McCoy's and you comparing them to the best. And it's like, no, this kid is different. Like the way he's slinging that ball, what he's, what he sees, this shit is different. So like for Pat, I always had high hopes on Patrick Mahomes, man. Like he would go out there and put up 600 a game and not blink an eye. So am I, am other fans, are we being too hard from you, a coach? Are we being too hard on the coaches? and scheming to say that Texas Tech should have been a, a one-loss team or should have been fighting uh, for a national championship? When when Pat was there? Yes, sir. I mean, fuck, bro. It's, it's hard. To, uh, in that league, it's hard to play defense, man. Like, when they're scoring 60-plus points a game, like, it's hard to play defense in that league. And we had, we had guys that ended up going first round on defense, like – Jordan Brooks was a first-round draft pick playing for the uh, Seattle Seahawks right now. You know what I mean? But we didn't get the recognition. Yeah. We didn't get the recognition because those – I mean, you matching – you I mean, shit, you playing against 50 points, 50 points a week. You know what I mean? Every team yeah. can score 50. So your numbers going to get kind of skewed in that aspect. But, uh, um, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think at the time it was, it was set up for those guys to be a national champion, championship contender. You know what I mean? Then no, let me go one one bit further. Since you saw him, and I know he had he had the combine, he had the, the team workouts. Why didn't he go higher in the draft? Why didn't he get more favorable Heisman consideration then? How did we all miss that then? Outside of people like you that saw him, I honestly don't know. Cause dude, lit it up at the pro day. I mean, if you if you ask all the questions about Patrick, there's nothing but good things to say about him uh, off the field. Um, honestly, man, I, I I couldn't tell I couldn't tell you. But the fact that he was a top fifteen pick at the time for me, that shit blew my mind. I thought he was gonna go for top ten for sure, just from what I saw. I just don't understand it. I don't I'm get lost it. on it. I don't get but, it. Okay. All right. All right. But, yeah, Patrick's a, uh, he's a generational talent for sure. He's a genera generational and talent. For our listeners, I want y'all to see the range that Mr. Mims have, which is why we're so excited to have him on this. We done took this dude from here to there to here to there. We messing with him. But we're going to mess with him even more. We about to and talk they, to him. And y'all fucking fuck with me after like 10 drinks. <laughs> I put Yo. my Christmas tree up. Look, I put my Christmas tree up. Y'all probably see my little Christmas tree and shit in the back. Like, whatever. But I put, oh, put my Christmas tree up. I just put my son in the bed. Having a little nightcap. Yeah. Y'all got me. That's efficient, yo. That's efficient. I'm, I'm not even close to... Having the tree out. It's still in the attic. No, I, 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 didn't, I, didn't put, I didn't put the whole tree up. Every bulb on that motherfucker is lit right now. <laughs> <laughs> so G League, we are gonna draw some G League on you. Come on. All right. The Pacer scout KJ Pritchard said that Oscar Shibwe asked their general manager what the G League rebounding record was, mm -hmm. and the general manager said 
Oh, that's easy. So the 2022 NCAA Player of the Year, Oscar D. Schwebe, he put up 33 points and 23 rebounds. I say his name. Rebounds. One more time. <laughs> <say it>. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Way? Yeah, I don't know how to say <laughs> it. <that, dude. laughs> it's it's P S H. So we're gonna say Tish Tashib Way. <laughs> Let's get him going. That's that's Shib Way. That's the way to say it. No, facts. <laughs> to Shib Way. So in his G League debut, he put up 33 points, 23 rebounds. That was the first 30-20 game in franchise history. In the G League rebounding, the G League rebounding record is 31. Yeah. And that was back in 2019 by Angel Delgado. Mm -hmm. So do you think Oscar can break the G League record when he debuted with 33 and 23? Uh, yeah. And he easy. says 31 easy. is light work. Man, easy. If he got that in the first game, yeah, that's that's just it's normal numbers in my opinion. Okay, so great. I'm glad you said that. I, knew, I was hoping you'd say that, Tevin, because yeah. this is the next question. As a teammate, if you know that your teammate is going for a record, mm -hmm. do you get mad as a teammate? Because you're like, yo, Donato, stay within the confines of the game, or, man, you're just out here trying to get the record. I mean, we all know what it is going into the game. like, But, uh, like, how far is he from the record? I mean, he's pretty close. Is it one of them? He missed, it. He, missed it by, he missed it. He missed tying it by eight rebounds. But he thinks next time he could get that. Yeah, well. Yeah, I got to get the fuck out of the way and let the big man do his thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, I almost like that because here, so so you've played with some amazing players. Let him the do way his I thing. thought about it is we, we could take a little pride because we all going to brag for years to come that. I was there. I helped my boy. I helped yeah, my man. There. I blocked out. That's all of our records. No, nah, man. Right? Like if you, if you know you got a uh, you know you got a super, a superstar with a certain skill set, y'all got to be yeah. able to buy into that skill set because one is putting butts in the seats. You know what I mean, and it's helping getting y'all wins as well. So it is what it is, man. It ain't a hollow statistic. A rebound. Yeah, no you doubt. Either snatching the board and sending it back the other yeah. way. Yeah. Or well, we get to put it back up again. You kick yeah. that thing out. Okay. Okay. No, real so, talk. I'm, all right. I'm taking you back to the NBA for this one. Come on. James Harden had a four-point play for the win. Now, I know you a football player, but let me explain something to you, Tevin. There ain't no four-point play in the NBA. For the win? No. But he did a four-point play for the win, which means... The, the clock is winding three. down, Tevin. I'm at the top of the key. You guarded me. I pull up, Tevin. You foul me, and he I busted the shot, like, and he busted. Now you had one job, Tevin. The job was just stay in front, hands up. We we win this game. If he makes the three, no problem. We go to overtime, mm -hmm. but you are gonna foul him, and then we lose. Kevin, when you get back to the locker room, do we have a conversation as a team? Do we unravel as a team? No, nah, we get on your ass. <laughs> we get on your ass. We and I'm going to tell you ass. one other little part about that, Mr. Mims. <laughs> that was a six-game losing streak that the Clippers was on. Yeah. And Harden was playing against his former team, the Houston Rockets. So you know they wanted to beat him. And they definitely didn't want no team that's losing six games Man. with all that talent. When is Harden going to – when is he going to join the winning team? Or when is he going to realize that <laughs> – or when is he going to realize that he's the problem on the teams? So, I mean, I'm glad you said that. Tevin, he said that he left Philadelphia, this last team, because they wouldn't let him be me. So, what yeah, makes bro, that's, him that's, be that's, that's – Look, man, that's as, as selfish – as you yeah. just fucking get as a from a I mean from a coaching standpoint, this is more, that's a selfish ass remark. You know what I mean? It and is. Obviously, man, just with his track record, bro, he's been bouncing around the league, and I don't know James Harden. I like he might be the greatest guy ever. <laughs> I yeah, know. James, what up, James? Let me hold something, dog. <laughs> I know. We don't know. Just in case you're watching this, bro, let me hold something. 
But uh, <laughs> nah, man. But uh, if you kind of just look at his track record of what he's been around the league, um, obviously a talented player. But I mean, if you're in all these good situations and you end up leaving and bouncing around, bro, you're probably the problem. You know what I mean? Tevin, he said he wanted to do, he couldn't be me, but he's coming to the Clippers. They got Kawhi Leonard, that's got Russell Westbrook, that's got mm -hmm. Paul George. You think you could be you there with them dudes? Everybody no, knows Russell, Will, Russell Westbrook need the ball. Everybody knows yeah. Paul George is a big shot, and Kawhi is the I man. mean, but, but, but what is, what is uh, Harden's role? What would you say his role is? In to my score opinion, points? To score? To, to distribute, to be a point guard. In my opinion. Because that's not Russell Westbrook, because you could back off of Russ. You could back mm -hmm. off, sag down, and you could double in the post. Because mm -hmm. ain't nobody scared of Russell Westbrook's three-point shot. Mm -hmm. But you keep James Harden up top distributing. You can let Russell Westbrook, who's still in great shape for O head, slash, mm -hmm. snatch boards, contest shots, and then that gives Kawhi and Paul George chance to, to flip both sides of the court. It, it, it could work if he plays into that system. Yeah, he's they got a system, great coach. He ain't a system oh, guy, not. though. You can tell how he showed up to the so game. He's from man. California. <laughs> That's cool. He just said how he showed up to the game, like, and I've I've coached, I've coached good players, man. I've coached players that's from this neck of the woods, and now you got to bring them to this. And nobody gives a fuck. Nobody gives a fuck at the end of the day, guys. Nobody cares. <laughs> you got to play into the fucking system. I mean, goddamn, be a team player, man. It ain't that hard. Six game losing streak. And it's over. Ain't that hard, dog. Buy in. Ain't that hard, dog. All right. We're going to talk about fitness. Oh, talk to and me. And if you haven't noticed, Tevin, I'm talking about, like, I'm, I'm leaning on you playing at some high levels, yeah. being a team player, and, and I want that perspective. Zion yeah. Williams, you Ooh, know what he father. can bring. Ooh, I just watched some highlights of him a couple minutes ago. But about that. He's not playing tonight. He ain't. He hasn't suffered an injury, but the Pelicans are playing it cautiously on a second night of a back-to-back -back Saturday. So he played yeah. last night, those highlights, but he ain't playing tonight because yeah. it's a back-to-back. -back. I mean, it's early, it's early, man. They got to take care of their baby. So as a teammate, you okay with that? Yeah, yeah. We, we in it for the long haul, dog. We but. Tevin, let me give you one other little tidbit. You know, this is the first year. Of so I'm the talking as a teammate. I'm talking as a teammate right now, guys. Fuck right, the coach. right. Okay. But I want to see if you're going to still be as a teammate when I give you this last little piece. All we right. got the in game tournament, the in season tournament going on right now. Mm -hmm. The winning team for the in season tournament gets $500,000 each. $500,000? So do you still want him to be missing these games right now that could qualify us? Ooh, no, sir. See what I'm saying? I mean, but shit. Just play for us to get in, then sit his ass down. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know that's how they're going to play it, man. Play for us to get in, and then sit his ass down. Let us secure our checks. If not, Zion, you're going to have to come up off some bread, dog. 500000 a piece. You know there's some dudes at the end of the bench, Tevin. They, that money's a lot for them. Nah, real talk. So it's a game That's, changer. That money's so a, hey, look, man, I'm just going to say that money's a lot for anybody. That's half a million dollars. Yes, sir. That money's a lot for anybody. And I'm glad you said that because LeBron James, we know him to be a, mil a billionaire. Mm -hmm. Even he, in a couple uh, interviews already this year, have mentioned – yeah, that 500 is serious. That's, that's five, yeah. That's 500K, dog. <laughs> like, we're not going to play that light. That's half a million dollars. I need to go touch. I need to go get that. If it's out there for me, I'm going to get it. So, I don't care how many still, millions I got. Do you still want to be very supportive of Zion sitting out and not giving you the best chance to get that 500,000? Well, no, not really. 
bro, you gotta play. I know, you man. Gotta you play. gotta you gotta play. Like I say, man, at least just look out for us. You know what I'm saying? Let, let yeah. us get to where we're in a good position. Yeah. And then let everybody eat, and then you can sit down, and we can pick it back up at the end of the season. But let, at least let us eat early on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let us eat okay. early on. All right. We're talking money. We're talking what would what would a player do with the five hundred thousand dollars? So you're in the league. You're you're an NBA guy. I know you're a football guy, but you're an NBA guy. Y'all win the in season tournament. Tevin, what you gonna do with that five hundred thousand? Five hundred thousand. It's a whole separate check. I'm finna, I'm finna chill. I'm finna invest that shit. Something, something to where right. I can get it back. Well, that's just me. You know what I mean? No, no, no. I'm glad you said that. I might because break, that's I might, the, nah, don't get me wrong. I'm gonna have a little fun, but you not. I'm not yeah. finna just go blow five hundred k. Like, no, sir. That's half a million. So some players are doing the right thing. Joe Burrow, you know the name. Him and Jason Derulo, the singer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are co-owners of a pro volleyball federation. Yeah. The investment move comes after they acquired a $2 billion car wash company named Rocket Car Wash. Mm -hmm. What thoughts do you have of Jason Derulo and Joe Burrow being co-owners of a pro volleyball doing doing some serious things with their money? No, I'm I, I think, it. no I think that's awesome. Like uh, I know, for example, a, a lot of a lot of guys are doing some uh, a lot of joint ventureships or partnerships that you might not even hear of. I know that they have the uh, the paddleball leagues out here in Austin that's, that's about to pick up and do pretty yes. well. Yes, uh, yes, you know, just different things like that to where guys been collaborating behind the scenes. It's just shit. How can we spread our money or bring that shit together to make more money? You know what I mean? I think that's smart. And uh, especially the way that social media has kind of influenced everything to where all these leagues are essentially intertwined. Like, why not? You know what I mean? Why not? Why don't we hear more of this, though, Tevin? Because we always hear the negative stuff about how players made it to the league. They come out of the league. They ain't got no money. They hurting. They robbing. They stealing. Why can't we get positives like this, though? Because it's not enough of it, truth be told, man. It's not enough success stories. It's more uh, It's more the negative stories than the success stories. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, I hate to say it, but it's true. And, they, and it's, they'll feed off the negativity more than the positivity, which is crazy. How come, Tevin, how come I see it? How come it's always like that? How come the, the, the rap stars, the, the R&B singers, why do they always gravitate to hang out and they end up being best friends with NFL players and NBA players? Man, I don't know. It's like it's like the, the athletes want to be musicians and the musicians. Yes. The athletes, that, that culture has always kind of played hand in hand. Yeah. As you know, man, like even uh, shit going into the football games, bro, you're going to bang the, the latest rap songs and stuff like that. Like the culture is just in you. So obviously all the rappers they want to they wish they was football players at one point they want to be on the sideline in the locker rooms and all that shit so i think it's dope man why not keep it going so tevin playing at your level in college mm. we just had a six foot nine division one basketball player on with us about two episodes ago maybe three or so he played at uh hampton he was a pirate would have played at vcu that was the the year shaka smart and then went to uh, the final four. And what he was telling us is, for some reason, man, how come the football players and the basketball players always get into fisticuffs and have problems on campus? What's that about, Tevin? I don't know, man. I really don't know. Uh, from my experience, we always got, uh, especially when I was at UT, we always got along with the basketball players. Oh. I always got along with them. Uh, shit, they had the, they had the most females, so. <laughs> I'm trying to see what y'all doing over there. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah. Man, uh, I don't know. I don't know what it is, man. I really don't. I really don't. Like, uh, I know for football players, I'll just speak, man. Like, we're more a little bit more testosterone driven and shit like yeah. that. But some basketball guys, they're, they're nice guys, you know what I mean? So I can see where that could clash. But outside of that, man, it's, it's all sports at the end of the day. It happens a lot, though. I, I'm going to stick with basketball 
you remember the Ball brothers, right? Yeah. Leangelo. Lonzo. Remember? Yeah. Lonzo. Looks like I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to put this out there. I think Lonzo is, I think he's done. When yeah, they got to yeah. take body parts out of a cadaver, out of a dead uh, body yeah. to put in your knee, it's over, dog. He done, bro. It's done. It's done. He had a good run. He, he got some chance. Nah, I had a great run and made some good money. But now a lot of his opportunities are going to come now. He's going to make more money than he's than he's ever made playing basketball right now. I promise you. I think you're right. I thought he carried himself well. We didn't hear about any drama, any problems out of him. So I think he's going to have some opportunities, man. He's yeah. a he's a Los Angeles kid, born and raised. So he can get back, use some connects, get into oh, some. Oh, bro. And, I mean, he's from L.A. You know, you good. Yes. You know, you forget his dad got the big baller brand. Like, let's not and that. Like, uh, I mean, he's a he's a big deal, man. Like, he might not be playing in the, in the NBA right now, but I promise you, he has his he has his shit together from a business standpoint, and he's gonna yeah. make more money than, he, than he's ever made playing and picking up a fucking basketball. I promise y'all. So, what I wanted to tell you about his 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 this is the youngest of the three boys, Lamelo. He's the starting point guard out there in Charlotte. To That's the one with all the text. Yeah. Yeah, he nice. Dude, I like the, him last, the last six games, <laughs> Yeah. this dude has one triple-double. He averaging, he averaging about 30 points, about six rebounds, Numbers. and about seven assists in his last six games. Numbers. So, Numbers. The reason I want to bring him, so he's balling. We appreciate that. He's got his own shoe. This is the third one. That first one was fire. You a sneakerhead? Hell yeah. So you heard the buzz when that first LaMelo came man, out. Come on, man. Yeah. Already That's considered a classic. Yeah, my dog. I bought the threes the other day. I was playing over there at Gregory Gym. Yeah. I went two for two on the court. It's my second day wearing them. I, I was feeling they good. Nice. They nice? They, they nice, man. They nice. I got the I got the the drip one, the acid drip ones. The second. Did you get the Did you out. get the first pair? Did you get your hands on the first pair? I didn't get the first pair. I wasn't a fan of him, so I won't check it on it. I was yeah, playing in a couple other seasons. I should have. I missed it. I missed that no opportunity. Doubt. The no first doubt. go around. So when I tell you that we were talking to his brother, his brother kept his nose clean. He's gonna do some good things. And then already this dude's his sneaker game is probably gonna outlast his career and he could do something with it. And now he's playing and he's putting up big numbers. But he's got a little bit of controversy from the NBA. His middle name is is LaFrance. So he's La Lamello LaFrance Ball. So he's got a LF tattoo right here. He gotta cover the tattoo up says the NBA because you're not allowed to have any logos on your body. Oh, really? His own clothing line named LaFrance. That's his shit, though. Thank you. It's his shit. I'm in agreement. So, hey, so when JR had that big ass young money tattoo on his neck, did he get fired for that? I don't remember it. But now. Yeah, it's big ass young money tattoo on his shit. Yes. <laughs> and they put <laughs> the all those logos on the jerseys nowadays. You know what I'm saying? But he can't have. That's his. That's his thing. That's his skin. You feel me? And that's his. But that's like me. Like if I got, because I run a little mobile cereal bar. If I want to get sticky pop tatted on my hand, like they gonna find me for it. I can't play in the NBA. What? Like what? What? I I see no problem with that. That's crazy. So here's here's the positive spin I have. Tell me, tell me if you right here with me. All on right, this. talk to me. So he's gonna have to go ahead and get it covered up. He's going to be wearing a Band-Aid, probably a colorful Band-Aid to match those shoes, his jersey. <laughs> Why don't you get your own Band-Aid line going? Remember, hey, like, really? used to hey. Wear the hey, they're going to capitalize off of it some way. I promise you. got to. I promise you. They're going to capitalize off of it some way. Y'all going to mess with me? I'm going to mess with y'all. Most definitely. They, they, okay. they LA boys too, man. They're going to capitalize off of that. I thought I was just being paid. Nah. You, you right on point. So now I want to I want to go back. We're going back to talk football. Mm -hmm. I'm taking you all the way to high school recruiting. Oh fuck! And I I purposefully picked this one 
because I wanted to make you mad because this is the other side of the ball. I'm going to talk about an offensive tackle. Yeah. Okay. Five-star offensive tackle. His name is Jordan Seaton. He narrowed his list of schools last night to seven schools. He's six foot six, 290 pounds, and he says the seven schools are Tennessee, Oregon, Colorado, Maryland, Florida, Ohio State, and Alabama. Mm-hmm. And he, this is what he said. To every school that took me time to get to know me and recruit me, notice what he said there, I'm more than blessed and grateful. When you start from zero, it hits different, but my journey is far from over. Stay tuned. Now, of those seven schools, where would you recommend this young man go? If he asked you, where would you tell him to go as an offensive tackle? Five can, you name, can you name them schools one more time? Yes, sir. Tennessee, Oregon, Colorado, Maryland, Florida, Ohio State, and Alabama. Ohio State or Alabama. Oh. See. For our offensive tackle? Yes, sir. Obviously, Alabama, they're going to put one out every year. You're okay. Gonna be the best in the league. <laughs> You, you are saying exactly what I want because I'm yeah, going I'm... against you, Tevin. Now, we know Coach Prime needs an offensive line to protect his son. We know he next does. year that could be a Heisman Trophy year. That he does. So if he goes there, all eyes on him. Five that star he does. So do you want to change And he getting paid, y'all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you want to yes, change Lord. that answer? Yeah, he going to Colorado, God damn it. <laughs> Cause no, I, I ain't even think about that. God damn, he's going to Colorado, man. That is the year. All uh, eyes uh, on that we set program, up, we set on up. that line. We set up. Them motherfuckers going to be wearing minks to the motherfucking games next year. Yes, they yeah. will. Real shit. They're going to be having minks on and shit. They, it's going to be because uh, they got close this year, man. They they made some noise. Now Dion got to stand on that shit. No, he got a whole offseason to stand on that shit. Out of all prospects coming in, this dude is number 15. He's the number one offensive tackle out of everybody, and he's the number four player in the state of Florida. You played some ball down there in Florida. That's a, exactly. That's that's another reason hey, why and I just when they say uh, if he's number one like that in Florida at tackle, he could probably play anything. Probably got great feet. Probably yes. great on the basketball court. Can probably yes. do three sixties and shit. Probably can do a backflip. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Uh, nah, man. But uh, he's a obviously he's a hell of a fucking talent, man. Like anybody who's who's able to get him, obviously next year is gonna win. But uh, I don't I don't see why he wouldn't choose a Colorado with the situation that they got set up. It's it's beautiful, man. You're that you're beautiful. you're that prime. I hate you to say that. You can't lose, bro. Like you can't really lose. Like all eyes on that incoming class. Yeah, you can't really lose, and and really, Dion. All you got to do is stay there one more year, get his kids up out of there, and he can go take any job he want. And he will. <laughs> he will. You know what I mean, like Texas A and M. Texas A and M. It sounds good, but I think they're a little bit too early. Yeah. A little too early. All right. The Heisman Trophy, the, the hallowed trophy for college ball. Tevin, I want you to name three Heisman Trophy winners that are important to you. Like, oh, when you think Heisman, you think of these three. What's the three off the top of your head? Damn. <laughs> you put me on the spot. I know. It's the hard oh, man. Ricky, stuff. Ricky, Toten and Peel, uh, Reggie Bush. Obviously, he was in my era, man, just being able to see him kind of live. And, uh, I mean, you know, they snub VY every time, man. So, I'm going to say Vince Young. Okay. I'm going to say Vince Young, even though they ain't giving to VY. <laughs> y'all know what it is, man. Yeah. Y'all know yeah. what it is. Oh, we all know. Y'all know I, what it okay. is. Okay. So, you said one of the three that I – you said one of the names I wanted. So, so let me let me drop this on you. The Heisman oh, goes. Hold on, me, hold on. Let me get, let me put my computer on the charger, man. It's for the oh, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Hold on, okay. bro. We gonna run some stuff until he comes back. The five star player. This is exactly what Seton Seton ranks as the number fifteen player in the in the country. He 
according to all four media companies, they all agree that he's number 15. He tabbed in as the number one offensive tackle, as I mentioned, and he's the number four player in the state of Florida. Now, Tevin played ball, if y'all remember, on his intro at the beginning, that he played ball at USF. They got major talent. Now, I won't cause the drama this time, but maybe on a subsequent episode, we're going to talk to Tevin, who lived in Texas, played at University of Texas, and then went over to Florida. We're going to ask him. He's going to have to make a decision on what state has some of the best football talent. Well, we're not going to do that today. He can't hear me, I don't think. So I can't. we'll blind, ah, we'll blindside him next time. On that. He might have heard some of that. He might have heard some of that. I don't know his computer set up. He might have good speakers. I appreciate that build-up while I was gone. Like I said, just to give y'all a disclaimer, this is probably my 10th drink of the evening. Oh. That's, and, uh, that sounds like mighty fine, mighty fine. I, had, I put up, I put up the, I put up the Christmas tree today and everything, man. I'm a, I'm a happy dad right now, super happy dad. Yo, we're all jealous because <laughs> the majority of us, we did not get that done, Tevin. I'm telling Ooh, you. Let me tell y'all, man. Let me tell you. Okay, so the Heisman goes to the most outstanding player in college football, and 15 oh, times before. That player has been on a team with three or more losses. This year, should, should this be the 16th time that that happens, Tevin? Jaden Daniels is the most outstanding player. I really like, I ain't gonna lie. I really like that kid, man. And I was kind of down on him earlier in the uh -huh. year because yeah. he was kind of playing flat a little bit. Yes, sir. But uh, I knew he was, I knew, I'm, I'm saying that I'm right. I sound like everybody else, right? I knew he was a good player, and now he's yeah. But uh, nah, man, I, I knew he, he had good talent, man. But it's yeah, I think he's clearly clear cut the guy. I okay, go win it. But of all the years that this has been doing it, I mean, we going back to 1935. I'm starting in 1935 to now. There's only been 15 times where guys had three. That's a lot of losses, Tevin. But I'm glad you said Ricky Williams that year. That Ricky Williams won. Texas was eight and three that year. I don't know if you remember that part. Mm -mm. So does that sour it at all for you? Hell no. Nah. Nope. Nope. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna let that uh, diminish your individual performance, man. Because at the end of the day, man, the Heisman is about the individual and the numbers that he put up. Obviously, man, it, it helps uh, once you start comparing him to other guys and their accolades and shit like that of where they finish the season and all that, like. I know we love to be able to, even like now, we love to be able to put like Caleb Williams in the conversations and shit like yes. that. But obviously, he's not playing. I mean, shit, he ain't playing no more. Like, he ain't, he's not continuing through the playoff run. So they all down on him. But uh, I don't know, man. I don't even know no, where I was going with that. No, no, I'm glad <laughs> you said that. No, because you're, you're spot on. Caleb Williams went 11 and 3 last year, won the Heisman. But like you said, he wanted no playoff hunt, and that was one of the guys that have three losses. So you're right on, sir. Tim Tebow, mm. back in 2007, that Florida team went nine and three. He still won the Heisman. Yeah, he did. And now we know those numbers were good, so I don't think I'm going to fight you on that one. How about this one, then? Let me see if I can shake your confidence on this one. Robert um, Griffin played at Baylor, a homeboy oh, for Oh, unshakable, bro. Come on, man. You can't they were nine and three though. They took three losses, Tevin. I ain't gonna lie. What RG three did that year was hey, that shit was magical. It was. That shit was magical. Then let me give you another three loss team: Lamar Jackson and Louisville. They went nine and three that year. Damn. I know. He had a magical season though. Like he did. I mean, that's why they went to Heisman, dog. Like it's a magical fucking year, like. The year Bo Jackson won it, Auburn went eight and three, Tevin. No shit. Yeah. Damn, that's kind of weird. I had to bring that's this a crazy one to little you. correlation. I'm going to hit you with two more, though. Yeah, talk to him. Tim Brown, when he was at Notre Dame, they went eight and three. What? And here's the last one Marcus Allen at USC. 
They went eight and three, and he still mm. won the Heisman. So who's gonna win it this year? I think it's Jaden. Well, hold on. If if Michael Penix wins the Pac-12 next week, wait. I just saw. I just saw an update on uh, Washington. Just came across the deal. They're they playing. Um, they on upset alert. What? They're with, upset with, alert. with they're Oregon up, State. Yeah, they're on upset alert. Goddamn! What I say? Upset alert. Goddamn! I you know gotta my, be kidding me. Nah, they're on upset alert. I just got a uh, a tick across the phone. It's five forty six left in the fourth. It's twenty to twenty two. Right now, oh lord! Oregon what? State might be able to get one. Now, you you do remember who that Oregon State quarterback is? Do you remember him, DJ? Yeah, Ingle Loli. Hey, one of us will get it right. Yeah, the Clemson kid. So hey, he came up out here. Clemson could no, Clemson could player, use man. that right uh, now. DJ, what's his name? DJ Ulalogi. But he's a really good player, man. Really good player. Uh, obviously, man, what he's been doing at uh, Oregon State is just a testament to kind of what he had in his package. But uh, if he get that shit done tonight, he might be in the fucking Heisman conversation. <laughs> so, Tevin, I was going to get to this a little bit later because I wanted to cause a little drama for you. But I'm yeah. going to do that drama now Talk since we him. talking about it. I was going to ask you, how does that guy – one, leave a program. That's the first question. I want to ask you that. How do you let good talent leave? And second of all, shouldn't he still be at Clemson right now doing this for Clemson? Or are you okay with Clemson using a guy from not far from where you grew up? He's from right here. He went to Westlake named Klubnik. He was the quarterback over at Westlake. Well, I'll just say this, man. And I've been in college football, but watching uh, Klubnik early, as you kind of compare him to the uh, the Watsons and the Trevor Lawrence's of the world and yes. things like that, he's just he's not there yet. I think he'll end up being a really really good player for Clemson. Yeah, uh, yeah. might have a chance to be be a Heisman guy, but uh, as of right now, he's showing too many things that he still has to be able to improve and develop on for them to continue to get over that hump, right? Because I turned the TV off when they was getting ready to lose four games, right? What's their uh, yes, record? Sir. They they four and four in the ACC, seven yeah. and four overall. So, so shit, you you four, you shit, you down two two, you down two losses at Clemson. Shit, you can chalk that shit up for the next year. You know what I'm saying? Just yep. with the standard that they've been able to to put on the last shit, the last 10, 15 years. You know what I mean? Yes. But, uh, hard shoes to fill. Uh, again, man. Local kid, want the best for him. Uh, I think he's going to end up being a good player. He just ain't there yet, man. He, he ain't there yet from the club net kid. But uh, going back to uh, what you said about DJ, should he still be there? Mm, at the end of the day, that's their job to rec out-recruit the next class, right? So Yeah. Uh, fuck. Okay. I'm so trying to, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to I'm putting my coaching hat back on, man. I'm starting to like sober. Yeah. No, yo, you hit. Man, I was trying to cause drama, but yo, you sidestepped that nicely. Yeah, man. I, man, I wanted yeah. you to, I wanted you to eat your own, man. I want you nah, to be a local kid. Nah, man, I, uh, cause I, I want these kids to do well, man. Especially if they come from the area. Yeah. Try not to beat them up too much, man. But at the same time, you got to be real, motherfucker. You ain't ready to go. You ain't ready yet. Not yet. You have to. You gonna have to spend some serious time this off season. Getting your shit right, get your shit together, fuck all this little NIL shit and all this. Yep. Yep. You know what I'm saying, bro? You went to fucking Westlake. It's already there for you, bro. It's there. <laughs> it's set up for you, bro. Get what I was gonna say is it's along the lines of what you said. What I was gonna say is you asked to be the starting quarterback at Clemson after all that talent that they came through there. So you need to be ready. And yeah. what what you don't accomplish. You gotta eat those law. You gotta eat that blame too. You have to. You gotta be ready for it, man. It just it's just what comes with the territory. You know what I mean? All right. It, what what is going on with mine? Hold on, hold on. I I, I came unplugged. All right, so Tevin, we're gonna yeah. add, we're gonna finish with one. We're gonna finish with one hard question, and then we're going to some live updates because we're in the last week 
before championship week. Damn, it's is it really? Coming. Is it really championship week? Next week. Next week is. God, yeah. Dang. It went quick, man. It went quick. All right. So this Quinn dude, this, says, my, this is time out, man. This is my first year out of this is my first year out of football since high school, oh. essentially. Oh. So I, I set out this year, just whatever. But dude, this is probably the fastest a fall has gone by. Yeah. Yeah. It's it man, I'm gonna tell you this. What what would what would you say then if you're going into championship championship week? already and it's gone this fast as a coach mm -hmm. this game today this is the hardest game to coach right because everyone's looking at championship um it kind of just kind of depends where you at uh obviously man you want to be able to cap off that season strong we you try to <laughs> you try not to look ahead to the next game obviously it's a fucking championship game everybody knows this shit coach like we're going to be looking ahead of this game, but as a coach, man, you just got to try to eliminate the distractions as much as you can, especially this week, man. This is always a bitch of a fucking week because you got all your families and shit in town, everybody fucking calling you and doing all this bullshit that has nothing to do with the fucking game. Senior <laughs> night. Of, you know what I'm saying? You, you, most of the times you play on, on Friday. A lot of people play on Fridays. I, I know we used to want to be the, the game that everybody wanted to watch. And not uh whatever, but uh at the end of the day, man, it's a lot of fucking distractions and shit this week, man. So yeah, as coaches, you got to do a good job being able to eliminate that shit, you know. Oh yeah, I understand. So this was that this was that hard hitting one. Before we go, we're gonna do some we're gonna do some live scores. Um, Quinn says ninety percent. He's coming back next year. I don't think you? a lot of people are, are happy. Oh yeah, man. He said he's coming back. He ain't gonna enter that draft. I don't think a lot of people are happy with Malik. I'm thinking Malik is going to leave. That means Arch is going to be stuck, not starting for one more year. Does nah. Arch stay? What, what's going to happen is Malik is going to go somewhere and ball. Yeah. As he should, because he's going to be pissed with the situations that's going to happen with politics. Yes, sir. You know, I'm just keeping this shit real. Uh, even with Arch, Arch is going to have a chance to compete for the starting job next year. No matter what the fuck Quinn oh. says, he's going to have a chance. Like, I'm just telling you, all he's going to have a chance to compete. And it's uh, – Quinn better not fuck it up. I'll just say that. <laughs> and Arch, he's going to be ready. He's going to have a – trust me, with all that hype, they're going to have him ready to go into a game. <laughs> Well, that performance, that performance that he put on last spring, y'all, yeah, gonna be fucking night and day from the Archie that y'all gonna see this next spring. Here's where I want to go something different though, Tevin. You know all those vaunted UT receivers. You know they leaving, dog. And now your starting quarterback, starting quarterback, starting running back is coming back from ACL injury. Maybe we throw Quinn he out hurt. there. Brooks got hurt last game towards ACL. That's yeah. okay. That's okay. Okay. So we throw well, I'm not, That's out not there. okay. Sorry, guys. Uh, no, it's not. It's not no, okay, I know what you're saying, though. That he could be recovered. T, well. T Choice and uh, they, they, they built a good stable of running backs to where I think they're going to they're gonna be all right. I believe in this leadership. So you throw Quinn out there next year. Let him do it. Let him get maybe one or two games. We don't even know if he's going to stay healthy. You know, he hasn't played a healthy year yet. Bro, like I said, if Quinn comes back and Malik leaves, and Malik leaves, Manning is gonna be the guy that they're gonna be pushing to the fucking oh. the job, dog. Like, let's call this shit what it is. He's a man. New, new wide receivers, though, and possibly no, they're the same age as him. Like Jonte Cook is the same age as him. Went to Desoto. You know what I'm saying? Like they came yeah. in the same class. Yeah. So, like all the receivers that they about to lose, shit, they not losing chemistry with them. What chemistry are they losing from a receiver to quarterback standpoint? None. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Archie throw them same throw, throw to them same guys in practice yeah. every day. Ooh. I'm just saying. He's running that scout team, and I I just thought for him, he that scout team is going to be pretty damn good though, man. Like, think about who's on that scout team right now. 
and you're going to the SEC. So there's going to be a lot of talent that wants to transfer in, some nice wide receivers that want to transfer in. Big That's where I was going to go. Big monster-ass wide receivers from yes. Mississippi and shit. You know what I'm saying? It ain't gonna yes. be no te- it ain't gonna it ain't gonna be too many more Texas guys. You know what I'm saying? Just litter through the fucking roster. Like them wild house is gonna be from the SIP. They're gonna be from Florida. They're gonna have some <laughs> like you yeah. feel what I'm saying? Unless you homegrown and shit. And really, if you homegrown nowadays, shit, you playing out of state. Yeah, yeah. To compete. All right. So I want to get your I want to get your opinion on. Uh, the game just ended. Washington won 22 to 20. Oh, nice. So they avoided Oregon State ranked number 11. Mm-hmm. All right. LSU, Jaden Daniels, it's 11 minutes to go, but they, they up on Georgia State. So they're going to go to eight and three, and they're ranked 15th now. He's already thrown for 355 yards and five touchdowns. He's run – for two touchdowns, one game? seven touchdowns. In one game? All seven touchdowns are him. This tonight? Yes, sir. All seven are his. Well, fuck. Heisman? <laughs> Heisman, dude. <laughs> okay, you did say it. You did say He's it. He's going to be posing in the end zone. Yeah. Okay, Georgia. Number one Georgia smacked ooh. around Tennessee, 38 ooh. to 10. Ooh. No ooh. shock there, right? Ooh, ooh. Man, I always forget about them good old Georgia Bulldogs, man. I don't know how I forget about them. But, it's, bro. Because they jumped Ohio State. Were you okay with that this year? This yeah, week? yeah. Look, man, they jumped okay. them in the playoff rankings? Go dogs. Okay. All right. Okay. Go right. dogs. Uh, hey, look, man. I've been saying go dogs. Shit. I'm trying <laughs> to think of what year it was. You going back to the Matt Stafford years? No, nah, not Matt Stafford. Okay, okay. But just recently, uh, I think Baker was still playing. This had to be like 16, 17, 18, one of them. Well, they had Sony Michelle in them still. Yes. I don't, know what, I don't know what year that was, but that team that that team that they put out there that year, I say, oh, yeah, brother, the world is in trouble for probably the next 10 years to fucking come. The way that they playing and banging and smashing in all three phases of this, Phases of the game, they hitting on both sides of the football. Like, yes, if they hit, if they hitting on offense, like they hit on fucking defense. Oh. bro, you got some fucking issues. You know, you got some fucking issues. Y'all gonna have y'all hands full for a long time, man. Like, it's gonna be hard, bro. I'm just, I'm just telling you because Nick Saban, he's starting to, he's starting to phase out the game. It's gonna be hard to knock them old, the old Georgia Bulldogs out, bro. For a long time. I'm just telling you, man. They got that pipeline rolling. And the boys ain't leaving state. They getting the, the you said homegrown. They homegrown. Them some bad boys around too. You said man. That's a real, hey, that's a real, hey, that's a real country boys around that motherfucker, man. Yes, it is. Hey, I got two for you. Shannon Sharp, Sterling Sharp. Yeah. Georgia. Georgia. Come on, man. Both Georgia. Come on, man. And, I ain't, and, and I'm a Texas boy. You know what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong, but shit get different when you cross over that sip, man. I'm just telling you. <laughs> yeah. When you, cross, when you cross over that Mississippi, that shit get different, man. They look different. <laughs> <laughs> Swap boys. Swap All right, so Clemson got, Clemson got that upset today. We were giving them a little bit of hard time. We got to give them a little love. They, they knocked off a ranked team, a top 20 team, North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Oh, they beat NC? Yeah. At that point, North Carolina only had two losses in the ACC, two losses overall. So that's a that's a good win for them. That's a good win. Because here's what you got to remember. If they and they lost, going to the championship anyway? No, because Louisville only has the one loss. But they got Drake May still? They got... Who their quarterback? Drake May, right? Man. North Carolina? No, it's it's Plummer. Jack Plummer. What the fuck happened to Drake May? Ain't he, ain't he at North Carolina? Oh, oh, oh. I thought you were talking about Louisville. No, 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 no. Oh, 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 okay. I'm like, man, Drake May, right? At North Carolina, that's the guy? Man, Drake May? Am I making this shit up? Let me see, let me see. Yeah, yeah, that's who they got. 
I'm like, man, I'm making this shit up. <laughs> so I'm new to Drake May. What can you tell? So this is what he hey, did today. Baller. What you mean? Look at the numbers. numbers. 16 to 36 today, 209 yards. He ran 10 yeah. times for 67 yards. Oh, yeah, that's what helped him. But his running back, Omarion Hampton. Hey, what the wide out? What the wide out numbers look like? Because wait, let me tell you about this this running back today though. Nineteen carries, one hundred and seventy eight yards, two touchdowns. Numbers. And he had a long for sixty four, so he numbers. got some wheels. Numbers. Now the receivers, I don't know, man. What you talking about? Nobody, Bro, nobody did over seventy. Not today, but oh, <laughs> North Carolina got a fucking wide out. I think he number thirteen or some shit like that. Devontae's. It sounded well, about right. But that motherfucker, I think they unleashed. I think he missed like a couple games early in the year. Then they just unleashed his motherfucker and he looked for like 200. You know what I'm saying? Or am I making this shit up too? Like, no, no. He, uh, well, they let that he motherfucker got, out the cage and he looked like he was let out of the goddamn cage. Like, man. I didn't know. I didn't know they had that kind of talent out there. What? In North Carolina? Man, I didn't know that's what they were doing. So look, bro. Uh, I'm trying to think, man. This is a. This is when when I was still in college, bro. They had. I don't know if you remember that scandal that they had in North Carolina, where they had like all them first round draft picks and shit. No, they had a I big ass. That. They had a big ass fucking like scandal up there. A long time ago, and they ended up setting their recruiting back. Like it fucked up their recruiting. That's why they ended up having to go get a go get a Mac Brown. You know what I'm saying? Okay. To kind of to kind of re raise that program out of shambles because that shit was fucked up, dog. Like, but they had picks coming out that motherfucker, dog. Like, this was when I was still in school. Yeah. So they fell off a, a little. But, uh, just because of the sanctions, just because of the yeah. sanctions, the NCAA yeah. cut that shit off. But bro, they got cats that come through North Carolina, especially if Max there. They're gonna have some cats, especially a quarterback. I'm a fan. I'm a fan now. I'm looking at these numbers. I'm looking at these two receivers. I like that running back. 170 yards. I like numbers. That. Numbers. Okay, let's get to another. Oh. Florida. You didn't woke me up, up now, man. I'm live. I'm live now. You say what? Florida is up on Missouri 31 to 30. Missouri has the ball with 38 seconds left. Florida's only ball. five and five. Tell you, man, put the ball in Mizzou hands, dog. Missouri is ranked number nine. Hey, I'm fucking in the with the I'm, Hey, look, man. I'm fucking with the Tigers all year long. Do you understand what I'm saying? So well, they're at the Florida 29, so they might be able to kick this for the win. Yeah, kick that bitch for the win. So yeah, Jacob we're... Pillar, shout out to Jacob Pillar, man. Go get you a motherfucking championship. Shout out to uh <laughs> shout out to Eli Jenkins. Go get you a motherfucking championship. Shout out to oh. uh uh B Jones on the O-line. Go get you a motherfucking championship, oh. dog. Y'all deserve, oh. man. Y'all deserve it, bro. Real talk. And uh I'm just gonna tell y'all, man, what, what they doing over there in Mizzou, if they're able to keep that staff together, they're gonna be just fine where the fuck they had in the SEC, dog. Hey, here's what I want to tell you, though. For our listeners, y'all better listen to what Mr. Mims is saying. Their only losses this year to number oh, 23 LSU, I'm talking 49 that shit. 39. Come on, man. And we just told y'all how nasty LSU is with possibly the Heisman Trophy winner this year. That that's that and, was their first loss. The second loss was to, at that y'all. time, number two, Georgia. I and they lost... Y'all. 30 to 21. It ain't and even I a promise you. So look, this is what this it's good coaching over there, man. Hey, look, I got my little coaching hand up and shit. So look, hey, it's good. Seriously, man. Like what y'all are looking at this year from a number nine team in the nation, it is good coaching on that stop on that from that standpoint. Cause I promise y'all they are doing way more with less. If you compare their rosters to anybody that they playing going neck and neck, yeah. yeah. They're gonna be our match every time. You know what I mean? But it's 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 the blood that's in that building, it's the coaches that's keeping them keeping those uh players going week to week. They but they buying and believing in that system that uh Eli has, has built over there. And that shit rolling, dog. Like I'm I'm fucking with Mizzou tough, man. I'm really I'm really I'm really like an advocate for him <laughs> outside this shit. 
I see that. Yep. I see that. Well, I mean, you spot on though, man. I mean, you backing it up. We're, we're looking at what it is. So the coach's name is Drinkwitz. Eli Drinkwitz, man. Like he was at. It's okay. So y'all laugh at Eli, man. But Eli took that same formula, same uh-huh. colors, all that shit from App State. Uh huh. Took that shit off the helmet and just put a motherfucking Mizzou tiger on that motherfucker. Oh, that's probably where still he went. Probably still running the same stretch plays and shit like that. All the play actions and shit off of that. It's still the same shit, man. But uh, like I said, bro, especially from an offensive standpoint, Jacob Pillar is the best wide receiver. One of the best. Him and Emmett Jones are the two best wide receiver coaches I've ever been around. Emmett is I got a live. And, I got a uh, live update for you, Tevin. What's up? Missouri kicks the field goal. It's good. Five seconds left. They're up 33 and 31. Game time, baby. You called that. Game Brady time. Brady threw Game a couple time. balls, got them down to the 18 yard line. Come on, Killed man. Him. Come on. We coaching over here. We ain't playing. I see that. We I coaching. see that. You ain't messing around. Yeah, man. We're gonna set the, we're gonna set this shit up for success. Yo, Mr. Mims, we exhausted all of the topics. We what? got some top 25. We got some scores. Man, we we did it. I'm just get, I was just getting loose too, man. The, yo, the hour goes quick, man. That's usually how it goes. I was this shitty is like why that. we this is why we brought you, and this is why we gotta have you back, Mr. Man. I was shitty. I was shitty. My sorry, guys. I was shitty like my first 20, 25 minutes. What? I still had a little sparkle in my eyes and shit. What? We we'll let the, we we'll let the fans tell us. We will tell the listeners. Get a little comments, you know. Hey, we bringing you back, Mr. Mims. Yeah, I will send you. you some invites. You just tell me if you can or if you can't. I'm in. We got I can this. every time. Yeah. It don't matter where I'm at, dog. I, I want you to. I want y'all to see my real settings and shit. <laughs> <laughs> my hey, real hey, background. Hey, you. You know, I'm on the back. I'm on the road too. You know, I'm in. I'm in a conference room at, at a hotel. Yeah, real talk, man. So hey, wherever we at, man, we'll uh, we'll make sure that we. That I'll make sure I set some time. Aside for you guys, man, because I'm fucking with it. Hey, we appreciate you. Hey, like, subscribe. We thank again Mr. Mims for joining us. Thank you, Mr. Mims. Cheers, motherfuckers. <laughs> Happy holidays. <laughs> Happy holidays. <laughs> Is there anything better than a trip getting ready? Nope. For a long journey where my podcast released a new app and searching for a faith feeling, a new fixation. Giving this a subscribe is the same sensation. Started with the day ones, they gave us food to support the season. Could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here for a reason. Notification bells, have some friends, all to let you know. Check your Bluetooth, connect, talk your wisdom out.